Welcome to the Culture Report, voice of Russia, America's weekly look into the world of arts, culture, and history. I'm Rob Sachs. Today on the Culture Report, we explore a couple that's been playing balalaikas since the 1960s. We were basically balalaika players in Nashville, Tennessee, and nobody else was, so it was a little bit, a little bit of an oddball thing at, at that time. And a look into life after the gulag. Many countries have its dark pages of history, and we have to figure out where these dark pages belong. Also, one of France's most revered musical acts dazzles crowds in Moscow. It's a program essentially uh, to give pleasure. That's all just ahead on The Culture Report. The Beltway Balalaikas have been pleasing crowds in and around D.C. for close to two decades. They're a five-member ensemble composed of balalaika players from the Washington Balalaika Society. Kathy and Dick Hulin are two members of the group, and they join us now. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. So how did you first get involved in playing balalaika? Uh, Dick, maybe you can start us off. In 1962, Kathy and I were just dating. We've been married 49 years, but this was before that. I went up to um, where she lived in Connecticut just on a visit and passed a Russian Orthodox church, and both she and I had taken Russian at Vanderbilt, and she was still an undergraduate at that time. I wasn't. And saw this church steeple, and I thought, I wonder if somebody there could tell me where I could find a ball like a teacher. So I just got off of the Connecticut Turnpike and went to a telephone booth and looked in the Yellow Pages, which is what people did back then. And uh, under the Russian Orthodox Church, I found two. The one that I called turned out not to be the one I'd seen from the highway. But they told me their choir director had a ball like an orchestra. <laughs> so come on over to the church. He lived next door, and he could give me a lesson. So I did that right that day. And um, and what drew you to the balalaika? This seems like you were really inspired to play this <laughs> instrument. Yeah, well, when we were at school, we learned some Russian songs in our Russian classes, but, you know, we didn't learn any instruments to play them on. So both she and I knew a little bit of Russian and of folk songs in Russian. So we knew there were balalaikas, but had not actually even seen one, I think, until 62 when I Went to that guy's house, and he had a house full of ball like us, and he gave me a lesson. Then I went up to where Kathy lived in Connecticut and uh, gave her a lesson, and we bought two ball like us. So we started playing them in uh, 1962, just the little ones, you know, a prima ball like her, and uh, she had an alto at that time. And what was the reaction when people said, oh, you're ball like a players now? <laughs> well... You know, we were, we were basically balalaika players in Nashville, Tennessee, and nobody else was. So it was a little bit, a little bit of an oddball thing at, at that time and in that place. But um, I guess there's no more reaction to that than there is to playing a banjo or a guitar. Yeah, uh, yeah a little bit more reaction. <laughs> People say, what in the heck? But, um, you know, it's a string instrument and it has frets, and uh, it's not that different from what other people were doing in Nashville. Kathy, what about your experience with the balalaika? What was it like for you uh, in those early days? Oh, uh, well, it was fun. I just played alto balalaika with Dick. I basically accompanied him playing the chords, you know. And we <laughs> we would sit around the women's dormitory uh, in the lobby of the women's dormitory playing balalaika back in a corner. And, um, you know, they just let us play. <laughs> it was kind of fun. And can you tell us about the sound of the balalaika? How does it differ from something like a banjo or a guitar? It's prettier than a banjo and quieter than a guitar. I don't know. It's um, People have described it as tinkling and... Uh, shimmering. <laughs> shimmering, yeah. Uh. It, it's a soft but beautiful quality. A mandolin is played kind of similarly, but is much louder, and um, so, you know, we, we also play mandolins, but uh, the balalaika is suited for the music that traditionally was played on it in Russia, and that was the music we, we had learned, you know, we'd learned the songs, and we wanted to uh, also play the instrument, so. Yeah, it's very ro romantic music, you know, and very folk and fun. Mm -hmm. 
And did you eventually, I don't know if graduate is the right word, but go up to the, the big balalaika? <laughs> I played the contrabass, yeah, but I, I didn't start on that until we joined this uh, orchestra in Washington in uh, 1992. Two or three, yeah. Yeah, 92 we joined. And uh, I, I immediately was asked to play bass, but uh, actually our son had joined and... Um, you know, we got married, we had children, <laughs> one of them grew up, he was in college, and he started playing in the Balalaika Orchestra here before we did, and he was a bass player. So uh, when he graduated from college, he was leaving town, and didn't they didn't have a bass player anymore, so when he left, we joined. I joined on bass, and Kathy joined on, uh, I guess it was six hundred Balalaika yeah. then, uh, and it's like an alto, but just a little higher pitch. So she was doing the same thing, but on a slightly different instrument. And uh, and then I made a uh, seconda for her. That was I had made instruments before, but not balalaikas. And in 1992, I made a seconda balalaika for Kathy. And then uh, in '94, I made the contrabass that I play. You joined this balalaika orchestra. What's it like to hear so many being played together? I think it sounds gorgeous. It's it's um, as as we've heard it said, shimmering and. You know, we have a conductor who graduated from the rimsky korsakov Conservatory in uh, St. Petersburg, and we brought her to the United States, her and her family, to conduct our orchestra. And uh, she does all the arrangements for the orchestra, and she does beautiful arrangements. You know, they're, they're very, very pretty sounding. And are they mostly traditional Russian songs, or do you ever adapt, like, uh, an American song into a... Yeah, we uh, do like the, a tune. She does an, an arrangement now and then of an American thing. We, uh, particularly for singers, we have uh, some things from uh, oh, Fiddler on the Roof and from uh, My Fair Lady. My, yeah, I could have danced all night. And several things like that that are uh, you know Broadway musicals and and other American music, folk music even. But um, primarily, we do Russian things and um, not just songs, but also some classical music from Russia. We do Tchaikovsky and Sridov, Budaskin. So tell us about the Beltway Balalaikas. When did you decide, hey, let's split off and make a little ensemble here? (laughs) Uh, That was, I think, in 96 or so. We started with four players, and uh, three uh, of the original players are still with it. That's uh, Jan Bohm, who's president of the orchestra. And she plays prima balalaika, and then Dick on the contrabass, and me on, I, I still play secunda with the beltways. And then our original accordion player was uh, Jim Vandelli, and Svetlana, who's our conduct, the, the conductor of the orchestra, plays uh, Domra, and uh, her husband, who was also a rimsky korsakov uh, graduate, plays the bayan, which is like an accordion. And so they joined the Beltways soon after they came here, which was about 10 years ago, I guess. And can you tell us about some of your performances that have been more memorable? We played at the Upstairs Pavilion, or whatever they call it, the Kennedy Center, when they've had... The Terrace Pavilion. The Terrace, and uh, that was for some kind of reception for people like Colin Powell and several members of the uh, Supreme Court. (laughs) We've played at the... British ambassador's residence at the uh, Russian ambassador's residence at the uh, embassy of Russian Federation and the Ukrainian uh, and the Uzbeki. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so you know when when they have uh, parties and they want background music while people you know socialize and talk and drink and that sort of thing, or even have dinner, but we are rarely uh, invited to give a formal program where, like, we're on the stage or something like that, and people are sitting still and listening to us. Mostly what the Beltway Balalaikas are uh, invited to do is play in the background while people do something vaguely Russian, you know, or or at one of the uh, Russian venues like the embassy. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have a party, and we play the background music for their party. We do sometimes play programs like we... Uh We just played at a Russian festival in Baltimore, and uh, that was a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. 
and um, we did sit on the stage and played a formal program for them. That was lots of fun, too. Wanted to ask you, though, uh, about playing in around D.C. and at these events where there's so many Russians. Are people surprised that you are not Russian? I suppose some, some people are surprised that Kathy Jan and I are not Russian, and then other people are surprised that Vladimir and Svetlana are Russian. It, it sort of depends on who the audience is because, uh, you know, not all of our audiences by any means are Russian-American audiences. So it depends on the venue and, and who's invited us. You know, if it's a Falls Church Women's Music Club or something like that, uh, then they're almost all Americans. And And what's unusual to them is seeing any Russians at all. So two out of five members of our group are from Russia. So, well, actually, uh, Vladimir's from Minsk, from Belarusian. <laughs> so what do you think playing Baalike has done to help maybe bridge some cultures between Russia and the United States? Well, I hope that it, it has. We always have warm feelings from our audiences. They, we almost always get standing ovations and... Uh, People come up to us and talk to us in Russian or English, you know, and I think, I can't think of any specific thing. Can you, Dick, that... Uh, well, about the bridge building thing, <laughs> I was just reading, actually, 30 minutes before you called, about uh, the Russian government has approved building a, a tunnel under the Bering Strait, <laughs> and uh, uh, we've played our... Our orchestra and also the Beltway Balalagas have played in Sitka, Alaska, and uh, there were some some guys at that event who were from Russia, you know, and we, we have always um, had good relationships because there, you know, there's nothing political about playing music, and we've always had good relationships, whether the politics between our countries were hot or cold, you know, uh, the... Russian musicians and we playing the same music always get along well. And, you know, we have soloists come over every year to play with our orchestras. So we know quite a few good musicians from Russia that play the same instruments and play uh, the same repertoire on them. And uh, when we were in Sitka, you know, there was a guy there talking to us about maybe coming and playing in Vladivostok. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet, but I think if they build a tunnel and we're still living, <laughs> we'll go up there for the opening of that and play. <laughs> That's just an ambition I have. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. So what would you recommend to someone who hasn't heard about a Leica performance? How would you uh, tell them to experience it, and what's the best way to, to listen and, and, and really... Uh, enjoy and appreciate the music and the culture? I would recommend that they get online and check www.balalaika.org and uh, that goes to the website of our orchestra. The Beltway Balalaikas have a, a link on there and so do uh, Ruski Musicanti, the WBS Sextet. And I think on YouTube there's a bunch of uh, Washington Balalaika Society orchestra pieces also. But anyone is welcome to come to our November concerts. We have annual concerts in the fall and the spring. One is Saturday, November 23rd at 8 p.m. at the F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater in Rockville. And then Sunday, November 24th at 3 p.m. at Kenmore Middle School in Arlington. And we would love to have people come. It's just like listening to any other um, orchestra, only it's... uh, Russian folk instruments Russian and, folk and instead fun. of violins and cellos and yeah. stuff. It's big balalaikas, little balalaikas, domras, gooseley, bayan. You know, the, the yeah. instruments we play are Russian, not Italian. <laughs> uh, we try to make our uh, programs educational and interesting uh, as well as being, you know, good to listen to. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experiences with us. That is yeah. Kathy and Dick Hoolan, two members of the group, the Beltway Balalaikas. Kathy and Dick, thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you.